So the object in JavaScript is the real MVP. It is the unsung hero of the software development world. And I say that because it's one of the most powerful data structures that you will ever use. And its power comes from the ability to quickly bundle all of your data together, almost like a briefcase, almost like an Excel spreadsheet. Objects have these things called properties where you can quickly input dates, you can quickly input strings, and you can even add things like arrays in other objects. But if this is kind of confusing to you, let's go ahead to the whiteboard and let's talk about a real life use case of when you would actually use an object. Let's say that we are in fact a fish scientist. We are studying the world of fish and what we want to do is we want to model our data. Now, as a junior programmer, one of the first data types that you're probably going to use is just the good old variable. What you're gonna do is you're going to create things like names, classes, and you're going to put your favorite type of fish and mine is a brown chub. And you think to yourself, well, this is great, but this isn't actually very efficient. Let's create a data structure to which we can actually put all of our data inside. And the first place that you might reach for is the classic array. But the array has limitations because in order for us to be able to access all of our data, what we will have to use is bracket notation with a number. And that is going to be very cumbersome because each time you want to access the name, each time that you want to access the conservation status, you're going to have to go in here and count each individual one. But the object comes to the rescue because the object is going to allow you to store all of these almost like an Excel spreadsheet, almost like a briefcase of data. We can bundle all of our data together and have neat little compartments to house our data in this thing called key value pairs. This is our key. This is our value. And you can always spot an object by the brackets. The brackets are the dead giveaway for the object. And we will talk more about how to actually create an array here in a second. But just recognize that the way that you access these key value pairs is just by simply going in here, typing in the actual name of the object. And I named this animal bite because I was actually bitten by a brown chub kind of a traumatic experience. Maybe I might talk about it, but I would access it by actually going to the actual object. So I would type out the actual object and then I would go into here and then I would type the key and this would allow me to access the actual value, which is going to be brown chub. So it'd be a string of brown chub. And that in a nutshell is the reason that objects are so powerful so elegant and allow us to quickly store and bundle our data, like I said, almost like in a nice little briefcase so that we can carry around our data all in our program and it doesn't get mixed up and we don't have to access it in a zero base index array. So let's go ahead, let's hop inside VS Code and let's actually start creating our own object. Okay, so we are inside of Visual Studio Code and we are going to create an object that models the fish bite that happened to me. If you are bitten by a dog, maybe you're bitten by a cat, feel free to model an object after an animal that you were bitten by, or maybe an insect. Maybe you were bitten by a mosquito. That's a perfectly good animal to be bitten by. So I'm going to go ahead and model this. And the first rule of objects is that they are always surrounded by curly braces, curly braces, curly brackets, however you want to call it. But this symbol right here always signifies an object. And within the object, remember, we always have key value pairs. Now, the important thing to really realize about a key is that there needs to be no quotations or quotes or double quotes around your actual key. But there has to be quotes if you are putting a string within your key value pair. So my value pair is going to be a brown chub and the brown chub needs brackets around it because it is a string. The key is turned into a string whether you like it or not. Even though there are no quotes around it, 
You can put quotes around it, but regardless, most of the time you're going to see it without the quotes, but still underneath the hood, this is actually being converted into a string, even though there are no double quotes. So the next is going to be, let's just say number of fish bites. So I was only bitten one time by a brown chub. And just remember, even though that this needs to be a string or this actually needs to be a sequence of letters, you can put other objects, you can put other data types in here. You do not need to be limited to a string in the value column, but you are limited to strings and numbers for the key. You can put a two here. You usually don't see that, but just remember you can put a number there if you want to. And underneath the hood, it's always going to be converted into a string. You can also put things like array. So if you want to put an array in here and you just want to put maybe a string of one, two, three, four, five, you can also do the same exact thing. But we're kind of getting into the weeds here. I'm sure you guys kind of get the idea that you can put anything that you want to in the value column. So I'm going to make this data look a little bit more realistic and I'm going to go ahead and put the class of the fish or the scientific name of the fish. I'm going to put the nickname of the fish and I'm also going to put the conservation. So a brown chub also has a nickname of a topsail drummer and also it has a conservation status. So conservation status and of course the brown chub is of least concern. It is not endangered in any way, obviously. The most important thing of any type of data structure that you ever want, that you ever run into is that you really just need to learn the CRUD. How do you create, update, read, and delete? So create, let's just go read, update, delete. If you ever just get lost and you ever just need some type of North Star whenever you are working with any of these data structures, just remember that creating, reading, updating, and deleting are the only things that you really need to know at the end of the day. And everything is kind of built upon that. So. Let's just say I want to add another property to this fish that bit me. And obviously this fish is not cool because it bit me. So I am going to add a property of is cool. And I'm going to set it to false because obviously any fish that bit me, I am not going to think of as cool. So we've created, but now we need to actually be able to read because we're going to need to display all of this awesome fish data into a web page. So let's go ahead and let's talk about reading. Now we're not going to actually read this into a web page as of yet. We will here into the future, but right now let's just worry about console logging it into the console. So I'm going to say fishbytes.name. And as you will be able to see, we can now read our name of Brown Chub into the actual web browser. And we can do all types of cool things with the actual data inside of our object. But let's also talk about another way that we can actually read from our data. We can have fish bites and we can also have, see here, a nickname. So the nickname for our fish was a top soul drummer. So we'll say nickname. And we can also access the individual properties of our object with bracket notation. So if I go and hit control save, we can access our actual object here within the bracket notation instead of having to use dot notation. Dot notation is probably going to be way more common and it's one of the actual reasons that we use objects to begin with is so that we can get that juicy little just dot right there, but just recognize that you can also access the data via brackets. Okay, so let's talk about an update. And an update is going to be super easy. Let's just say for some reason, I now think that the actual brown chub that bit me is cool. It is kind of badass that it just swam up to me and just bit me out of nowhere like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this to true. And just for good measure, I'm going to make sure that it is correct. So I'm gonna say is cool. And we are going to go ahead and log this into the console. And now we have true within our console within the web browser. So if we wanted to display that, we definitely could. So next let's talk about delete. So if you want to delete a property, you just go into here and you go delete and then you say fish bite and let's just say we want to get rid of the conservation status we can just go ahead and delete it like that and let's go ahead and console lock it out fish bite so fish bite dot 
conservation status. Let's go ahead and log that to the console. And it is undefined because it is no longer a property, so therefore it does not exist. And lastly, just for good measure, let's take a look at our actual object and see what it looks like now, just to see kind of what it looks like in the browser and see what this beautiful object looks like. And as you can see, it's just curly brackets and our object is just waiting there just for us to manipulate in all different types of cool and exciting ways. But this is incredibly important and I hope to God that everybody actually stayed because if you don't realize this, this could really come back to bite you. Another important thing to really realize is that you can have arrays within your object. So if I wanted to have a couple nicknames, let's just say I had multiple nicknames for my brown chub. Let's just say I could also call it a gray chub. I could call it a uh, green chub. If you want to <laughs> just any type of nickname that you want to. Also a brown chub is also called as you guys are always as you guys remember, you can also call your brown chub a topsail drummer. And you can quickly house arrays within the actual object itself. And if you go down and look at it, you can see we have an array within our property. So not only can you store strings and can you store numbers, but you can also store arrays. And this is going to lead me to likely the most important one and the most important one that you are going to see on a regular basis. You can actually have an object uh, within an object. So the way that you nest an object within an object is you just have a property and then you have the curly braces within an object. And if I want to model this, let's just say I want to add some type of meta metadata to my object. I can go in here and I can add HTTP and I can add like a picture. Let's just say we go to wikipedia.org and we have a picture right here. So we have a picture Dot JPEG of a brown chub that doesn't really make much sense, but you kind of get the picture. It's just a string. And we can also have maybe a longitude. So longitude, and we can put a number and we can go just put that number in there. And we can also have a latitude just, just to store and model different types of crazy data. It really doesn't matter. It's just here for an example's sake. So if you look at that, we now have an object within an object and we can have we can be able and we can be able to access this object in a nested manner and the way that we do this is we just dot again so we'll say nested objects and the way that you model this let's just say you want to go and you want to access fish bites and you want to access the nickname, you would access it just like you would a regular array, but you would do so in a nested fashion. So you would just dot it again, and then you access the array just like you would a regular array. It's just in, ha it just has an extra dot. And as you can see here, we've pulled out or we've plucked out that value from within an array that's nested within our object. And even better, even more important, is if you want to pull out a value from your nested object, watch this, this is su super cool. You just hit dot again, and then you can quickly access the, your picture data as well too. So you can quickly access any type of nested object just by dotting once again. And that is super intuitive, that is super cool. Watch this. So quickly, and as you can see, we've quickly pulled out that value from within our nested array, and we can quickly access our data in all types of super elegant ways. Anyways, hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and as always, thank you for watching.